So I am um, going to talk about pig heads today. Uh, I've now realized there are two types of people in the world, the people who go, oh, and the people who go, oh. <laughs> so I don't know which ones you are yet. Um, if this does inspire you to uh, cringe and you're considering leaving the room, um, just hold off for a minute uh, and let me share with you my definition of a cringe. Oh, there it's the monkeys cringing. Um, <laughs> so a cringe is the human body cowering in fear for a tiny instant. We most often cringe in moments of revelation, and one of the most fearsome revelations we can encounter is that we are not who we think we are. So no matter if you eat meat or not, um, or if you eat pig head or not, I urge you to stick around for uh, the revelation because sometimes it can be good for us to find out that we are not who we think we are. So um, just a little bit of background. Uh, I've eaten pork for most of my life and every other kind of meat, um, save for the six or so years I was a vegetarian, which is what you did when you moved to Eugene, Oregon at the age of 14. Um, Eventually, I started eating meat again because I, as Gretchen mentioned, um, started working for a food magazine in, in New York. And um, it wasn't until I was 28 years old, however, that uh, I first tasted meat from a pig head, um, although I didn't know at the time I was eating pig head. I was on a research trip um, to Portland, Oregon from New York where I was living. Um, where I was an editor for a food magazine there. And I ordered an appetizer on the menu um, that uh, was called, quote unquote, pulled pork. Um, it was a long time ago, but it probably looked something like this. The, the, the quote unquote pulled pork was in a uh, ramekin shape. And once I dug into this quote unquote uh, pulled pork, uh, the meat looked something like this. It was really probably the, the richest, most delicious meat I had ever eaten. And so I asked the chef, what is this um, quote unquote pulled pork? And he said, it's pig head. He whispered, he actually whispered it. Um, he said pork cheeks mostly, um, but tongue too and a few other bits. And I asked him, well, why do you call it pulled pork? Um, and he said, because no one would, would order it if he called it pig head. Um, and I told him it was delicious, and he said, you know, it doesn't really matter. Every country in the world that eats pork has a delicious recipe for pig head. But in America, pig heads are just too weird for kids like us. And that phrase stuck with me, kids like us. So it would be another um, four years, uh, not until I turned about 32, um, which was a long time ago, um, before I actually butchered and cooked a pig head. So in 2009, um, I lost my job as a magazine editor and I decided, like most people who lose their jobs as magazine editors, to go to France and study butchery and learn how to cook a pig head. Um, so I ended up uh, hooking up with a family of um, pig farmers and butchers, uh, the Chapelards, who um, owned a vertically integrated pork process. So they grew all the grain to feed their pigs. They grew about 500 pigs a year. Um, they owned a cooperative slaughterhouse and they also did, they had a cutting room on the farm so they did all of the butchery themselves and they turned about half of that into charcuterie and then the other half into fresh cuts and sold all of, um, all of the parts of about 10 pigs each week to, at four outdoor markets. Um, and so on my first day, they um, decided to initiate me by having me cut open pig heads and also make blood sausage. They went straight to the heart of things. Um, although I didn't actually deal with the hearts that day. Um, so, you know, they, they, made their, they made their fromage de tete, their head cheese. They cooked the, um, about 10 pig heads in a big vat of boiling water with leeks and carrots and onions. Um, and then they, they, once that was all soft and gelatinous and um, smelled delicious, they pulled it apart, put it into terrines, and cooked it to make their fromage de tete. Um, and I, I remembered that anecdote that I just brought up about the quote unquote pulled pork that I had eaten back in Portland and wanted to sh I wanted to share that with Dominique. And uh, he said, why, you know, why don't Americans like head cheese? Um, and I said, because they think it's brains and eyeballs and everything else. And he said, well, what's wrong with brains and everything else? And I said, uh, maybe because they remind us where meat comes from. And he looked at me completely befuddled um, and said, what's wrong with being reminded of where meat comes from? Um, I couldn't really answer the question. And then he asked, why would you raise an animal for food and then not eat every part? I didn't have a very good answer for him at the time, but his question stuck with me as I continued to, um, to study with him. This is Dominique and I, um, he's, I have my finger dangerously in front of a knife there, pointing to where the pig head should be. Um, 
that day, actually, I ended up opening up randomly a book by John Berger and found this quote, um, which is, a peasant becomes fond of his pig and is glad to salt away its pork. What is significant and is so difficult for the urban stranger to understand is that the two statements in that sentence are connected by an end, not by a but. Um, Dominique and I came, Dominique came from a land of ands, and I came from the land of buts. Um, curiously, at, at that time in 2009, and the statistics are about the same today, Americans who typically will not knowingly eat pig head or a lot of other parts of the animal ate an average of 265 pounds of meat a year. Um, the French who generally embrace pig heads and every other part of the animal ate an average of 120 pounds of meat a year. It's about the same now. Um, so that's a whole lot of animals that our industrial meat production system um, has to raise in order to satisfy the American um, appetite for meat that doesn't remind us where meat comes from. Um, and so I wondered as a journalist, but also as someone who was starting to think about where I wanted the meat I ate to come from, um, what was at stake when we refused to eat the pig head but demanded the pork chop, for instance. So, um, learning what I learned in France and taking a more active part in those old-fashioned processes of turning pigs into pork um, really kind of changed everything for me. Um, back home, I stopped buying meat from the grocery store for a while, and I began um, going to farmer's markets and, and buying um, whole or half shares of animals directly from our local farmers. And these were farmers like the Chapelards. Um, and when I say like the Chapelards, I mean uh, about, at the time, 99% of um, animals raised for food in the industrial world were factory farmed. The chapelards were that 1%. Um, that number has gone down slightly. Now it's 97% and 3%. Um, so I was looking for farmers like the chapelards when I came home. Um, and I noticed that when I bought meat from those farmers, the prices were obviously much higher than the meat that I bought in grocery stores. Um, and so I started eating less meat. I started thinking about meat as an accent to my meals. I just cooked with it a lot, a lot in, a, in, a, in a different way. Um, and then I also started thinking about how that transparent hands-on education that I had gotten in France had changed how I, how I ate and how, what I bought. Um, and since the rate of meat consumption in America is, uh, continues to rise much faster than the rate of people becoming vegetarians, I wondered um, what, what's the in-between? What, what, what's in-between just eating meat from wherever it comes from and not eating meat at all? Are there, are there options for people who want to care where the meat comes from um, but don't know where to start? Um, and so I decided that the best way to um, to go about changing that culture, changing how people thought about these things, was to start my own uh, educational program, essentially. So the Portland Meat Collective I launched in, in 2009, the year that I came back from France. Um, and my goal, really, with the, with the PMC is to inspire um, responsible meat production and consumption through hands-on experiential education. Um, so we began offering classes in 2010. They look kind of like this. Um, we teach uh, slaughter classes for those who want to know that part of the process. We teach butchery, whole animal butchery classes, and then we also teach whole animal utilization classes. Um, the majority of our students for the first few years were consumers, were people who knew nothing about where meat came from and just wanted to know more. Um, as we grew, we started getting more farmers and more chefs. We started getting people who worked at meat counters who had never actually butchered a whole animal before who wanted to see that, that process. Um, one of the classes that we offer is a pig head class, a pig head butchery and charcuterie class. And um, in 2012, a local newspaper uh, ran a story, but the author came to our class and ran a story about his experience there. Um, and he said he found the experience both horrifying and enlightening. Um, horrifying for the obvious reasons, it's a pig head, ah. Um, but enlightening because he said it made him a more conscious meat eater and it had increased his skills in the kitchen. It had also increased his understanding of where meat came from. However, after this story ran, a reader calling herself um, Oregon Mamacita wrote in to protest saying um, more or less the following. I eat meat, barbecue ribs are delicious, I don't have a problem with anyone who works at a meat counter, but this pig head thing is super sadistic and creepy. This is not normal, for shame. Um, so I wrote back to her saying more or less, just to be clear, pig heads are made of meat, fat, and bone, and ribs are made of meat, fat, and bone. Um, the only difference between the two is that a pig head reminds you you are not who you think you are, i.e. someone who eats pig heads. <laughs> um, a few years later, I had the opportunity to spend 
um, a week with a bunch of high school kids, teaching them the same stuff that we teach adults at the PMC. So we visited a local farm and met the pig that we had bought as a group. Um, we witnessed the slaughter of the pig at a local slaughterhouse. And then we took the two sides of um, pig back to the kitchen and I taught the kids how to transform every part into food. They picked up knives and did it themselves. Um, the New York Times ran a story about this, and the photo on the left was the opening spread, um, obviously a, a nod to Norman Rockwell's famous painting. Um, most of the comments uh, uh, of objection were from vegetarians and vegans who thought meat was murder, thought it was irresponsible, teaching kids compassion was the better thing to do, they said. But I was more interested in the comments from the meat eaters. Um, one comment intrigued me the most, um, he said, this is disgusting. I consider myself a foodie and love all sorts of meat. Hence, was looking forward to reading this article. However, when I saw the picture, I was turned off by the way it was depicted with a pig's entire head on a platter. It just sickened me. Um, Jonathan Safran Foer wrote in, in uh, his book, Eating Apple, uh, Animals, Apples, Eating Apples, wouldn't that be a nice, <laughs> nice book for us to read? Um, eating Animals, there is something about eating animals that tends to polarize. Never eat them or never sincerely question eating them. Um, I found it astonishing that in the act of protesting the consumption of the pig head, which is quite simply food, like every other part of the animal is, um, this man made it entirely possible for himself to continue to never sincerely question eating animals, while at the same time um, appearing, to question, appearing to question eating animals. Um, and this is, in my opinion, sort of the problem with the way we, the current debate about eating meat in America. Um, so in 2013, uh, Martha Stewart called me up, um, wanted to give me an award for the work that I did. Um, this is really the only reason I decided to do this, was I so I could brag about my red carpet moment with Martha Stewart. Um, she wanted to feature us in the pages of her magazine, and um, because I've sort of had a secret crush on Martha my entire life, I decided to go ahead with it. Um, and so they came out, they, we, we sort of faked a pig butchery class, um, and at the end, the photographer wanted to take some pictures of meat for the, for the, for the magazine. And so um, he said, you know, what, what's your favorite cut? Why don't you pull out your favorite cut and I'll photograph that? And so I pulled out a pig head, um, just to see what would happen. Um, and he said, you know, that might be a little much for readers, but um, maybe we could wrap the pig head in paper um, <laughs> so that it might be a little easier on the eyes. So I decided to wrap it in paper and wrote head on it. Um, and then <laughs> her assistant uh, said, you know, that looks really good, but I wonder, could you take it back out of the paper, um, cut the ears off, and then use these toothpicks to put the ears up on the head and then wrap it back up again so it looks more like a pig head? Um, <laughs> and because Martha gets what Martha wants, I did that. It sort of looked like that. Um, and it, that never, of course, appeared in, in, the Martha, in Martha Stewart's pages. Um, ha, and I was sort of you know, a little angry about it. Why wouldn't they put a pig head in, the, in, in Martha Stewart? I think we all know why. But it occurred to me that the fact that they were even putting us in their pages, that they were showing a whole animal, they were showing us butchering a whole pig, was a pretty huge step for, for Martha Stewart living. Um, during that time, we started getting a lot of media in, in various um, national publications. And so I started getting people calling me from all over the country asking me to open meat collectives in their towns and help them bring the kind of education that we do to their communities. So I launched um, formerly the Meat Collective Alliance, now the Good Meat Project, which is um, a nonprofit that again is trying to inspire responsible meat consumption and production through this kind of experiential education. Um, we work with, again, consumers. We're, we try to spread the meat collective model to other communities. Each meat collective is owned individually by various um, chefs and farmers and butchers. Um, and by the way, the, the classes are taught by local chefs, farmers, and butchers who, who know how to use the whole animal. We hire meat, retired meat science professors. We hire people who work at slaughterhouses to teach the classes. And we source whole animals from local farmers. Um, we also uh, try and we're, we're now developing uh, experiential hands-on training programs specifically for chefs or um, meat counter workers or um, grocery store workers to help them understand how whole animal utilization can be incorporated into their business model, how they can make money on it, but also how can, they can work on food waste issues, climate change issues, that kind of thing through this kind of um, whole animal butchery program. And then lastly, we um, work with farmers. So we take our, our hands-on experiential education model and um, customize it for farmers and try to get 
um, farmers from around the country who are successfully um, selling whole animals to restaurants or consumers um, and help them to understand how do you sell a pig head? What do you do with all the bones? What do you do with the organs that are sitting in your freezer that no one will buy? Um, lastly, I'll just say uh, this is sort of a, a long game that I'm playing. Not everyone wants to butcher a pig on their kitchen counter and not everyone wants to eat pig head. Um, but I, it's my hope that someday through the work that we're doing, this may appear in Martha Stewart living, maybe in like 40, 50 years. Um, and eventually, maybe this will appear, um, that, that that process will become a part of our, um, our consciousness and our, our cultural understanding of where meat comes from. So thank you. There's the information on the Good Meat Project and the Portland Meat Collective. Thank you.